been a long time since I made a video. I'm not even sure I remember how. Let's give it a shot. Intro. What's going on guys and welcome back to the Big Apple Ranch. Today I got a little bit of a different video for you. As you can see we're in the garage, we're not at the range. I haven't gotten any new guns lately but I did get something else. So let me show you the newest addition to the Big Apple Ranch motor vehicle family. This is my new Can-Am Maverick X3 XRS. It's a 2018 it was at the dealership, no one bought it. So when I bought this machine, it had four hours on it from the dealership, pretty much brand new. So I sat in this particular machine probably a dozen times. Um, the dealership is right real close to my work. So every time I would drive by and had some free time, I'd stop, I'd sit in the machine. I'd, they also had some Polarises and stuff. So I'd sit in the razors and all that, but if this machine fit me. I wanted this machine for a long time. Finally came together with the salesman and made it happen. So I've only had this machine for about a month or a month and a half. I haven't put that many miles or that many hours on it, but I've owned it long enough to know that there are some things that I really, really love about it. And there are some things that I think can am could have done better with. Um, so I'm gonna give you my little beginners pros and cons to this Can-Am today. I'll show you a few things I've done to it that were done to it and uh, I'll show you some riding video. I got a new video series I'm thinking about making. It's uh, I'm going to call it the Road to Moab. Me and the family were planning a trip out to Moab here in about uh, four months. We're going to May for Rally on the Rocks and neither machine is ready. We're going to be bringing both. Now the machine's ready. I need some street legal stuff. I need some tools. Uh, I need some safety equipment. I need some other parts. Uh, now the machine is really ready. So I'll do a Road to Moab video series where I'll take you through, kind of show you what I'm doing every day's off, every three weeks. And then uh, I'll take you to Moab and I'll show you. It's going to be a week long little adventure for the family. We're going to have a blast. So I'll take you there. I'll show you what goes on every day of the trip. And uh, it'll be a blast. We're going to have a good time. There's some logistics I still need to work out as far as how I'm going to haul two machines down there on an 18 foot flatbed. But we'll get there. We'll get covered. That'll be part of the Road to Moab video series. We'll deal with that in a bit. So let me take you around the machine. Let me show you a few things that I've noticed that I either really love or really can't stand. I'm gonna go handheld for a few of these shots. Usually I do everything off of a tripod, but it's just gonna be easier to show you around the machine handheld. And I got the OG Canon lens on there. I took the Tamron off, so. All right, so to start with this machine, one of the things that I absolutely love about it is the exhaust. I don't know why. I just love how the tailpipe comes right out of the center of the muffler, right out of the center of the machine. Something I love. Uh, really small detail, I understand that, but I love the aesthetics. I love the way the machine sits. I love it the, the way it looks, the accent lighting, the headlights. It's just a mean looking machine, you know. Um, I guess uh, if I had to compare it to, to anything in the automobile industry, it'd probably be like, super comparable to like a pre-runner as far as the aggressive look and what it looks like it's capable of doing uh, another thing i love about this machine is the adjustability of the shocks now that might be pretty much standard anymore but you've got two different rings you can change your crossover adjustment which the rears are pretty much all the way down um, or you can change your main spring height, you can change your compression, you can change your rebound, you can change your, and the compression's got a high and low speed. I mean, it's just super adjustable. So when, this being a 2018, when it came from Can-Am, it had the Can-Am tune in it. So I went through, downloaded the Fox tune, 
and went through and readjusted all of the suspension so it's got the fox tune in it another thing that i really really love about the machine is beadlocks beadlock rims just from the factory i'm a fan of beadlocks i know a lot of people say uh if you if you go down on pressure say you're at the dunes and you pressure down your tires some and then you go to fill them back up the beadlocks never really seal again and you start losing a lot of air I don't do a whole lot of sand dune driving, so it's not really a problem for me. Another thing I really like is the cockpit. So when you sit in this machine, it just feels, it, it's a hard to describe feeling. Um, I sat in a bunch of razors, and one of my neighbors has a razor and I drove it. <clears throat> it's not that I hate the razor, it's just that it feels like it feels like a how would you how would you explain it? it feels like a golf cart you know you're sitting up it's not really relaxing some people find that comfortable i know my wife prefers to sit up she wants to see the front of the machine as well as she can she wants to see the front tires and there's there's an argument to be had there but all this sitting back like this in the cockpit all it takes is uh, some getting used to, I guess. Um, I grew up around race cars. I grew up around race carts. Pretty much everything we had was sat back. You were sat back in the machine like this. This, this feels super familiar to me. I love the push button start. That's a nifty little feature. Fires right up, just hold the button. Uh, the two keys is cool. Um, it gives you the option. I've got the the go fast key here and the restricted key here. We got a buddy. It's not really experienced. You know, you don't want him unleashing the beast. Give him that green key and let him go. So let me, I guess, tell you some things that I really can't stand about the machine. Number one, it is freaking squeaky as all get out. They're all squeaky as all get out. I've seen in the last year and a half two years that I've wanted a Maverick I've seen a lot of videos reviews I watched the side-by-side -side blog boys Leonardo he's got multiple x3s I think now but I remember when he got his first x3 and riding it around and it is freaking squeaky man his is squeaky mine is squeaky a lot of other videos I've seen are squeaky I've gone through I've sprayed down all of the suspension mounting points with some dry molly lube i've tried shaking the machine to find the squeak i don't know where it's coming from it's just a squeaky machine thankfully if you're doing any real moderate riding you you don't really notice i mean you got a helmet on you got your goggles you're you're doing you know 50s you're you're sailing through the through the dirt roads you're sailing through the through the flatlands i mean you don't really notice but if you're trying to do a nice little comfort cruise you know 20 miles an hour or whatever and no helmet you know you're just kind of bebopping around you're gonna notice that squeak that squeak is super predominant another thing that i really don't like about the machine and it's really not so much on the machine as it is on can-am themselves i've got these side bags here got them yesterday because one thing that this machine lacks is storage when you buy this machine you get a glove box and that's it the bed is pretty much useless in its stock configuration there's uh there's nothing you're really going to use the bed for uh, as far as storage or transport so i went out and i bought uh the roof bags i'm sure you've seen them there's a little bag on each side passenger and driver with a bar connecting them in the middle. I got that from my dealer uh, just about a week after I got the machine. Brought it home and started tinkering with it and the thing was way too narrow. It's almost like, it just, it's almost like it wasn't even the right part, but it said on the part number it was for the X3. So I returned that. I got these side bags and I went to put one in today. And once again, the fitment terrible it would fit just fine if it wasn't for the gusseting in the doors these crossbars this lower door panel extension if it wasn't for all that their bags would fit just fine but it's almost like they didn't take into account 
anything. They just they just made their bags and shipped them out. And it's a shame too, because it feels like a high quality bag. It's super weather resistant. You can tell. The zipper's nice. Everything about the bag is nice. It just when it came to fitment, they were like, oh, let's make it semi-universal so we can use it on multiple machines and ship it out. Third thing I really don't like about the machine, uh, fit and finish. Uh, the assembly process of these machines. It. I don't. I don't know if somebody showed up to work drunk, or if their give a damn was just busted. But uh, I've had loose bolts. I've had the steering wheel was cocked over an inch to the right, going straight. So steering wheel alignment was just bad. When I did the Fox Tune, it's almost like they grabbed four different shocks from four different machines and just <laughs> threw it on this one because. I mean, I had high-speed compression, six turns different than this side, and low-speed compression, two speed, two turns different than this side, and things were just not the same. It wasn't a well-balanced machine when I bought it. So once again, that takes us to this is your flagship, right? This is this is your machine that you kind of you're competing with Polaris. And I guess maybe if you want to throw the Honda and Yamaha and maybe the Kawasaki. I mean, we're getting ridiculous. It's really, it's Can-Am and Polaris. You're competing with Polaris with this machine. Bring your best, bring your best game. Put your best foot forward because Polaris is making some serious advances in uh, suspension technology. They've got their, their live command system with their screen and everything they're making some serious advances and can am i don't know figure out who's assembling your stuff and fire their butts now another thing i changed my oil at 10 hours the oil filter packed full of rtv so the guy building the engine must have just went crazy with the rtv um when I say pack full, just more than I would like to see, more for my, more than, more than what I'm comfortable seeing, as far as RTV and a filter. You hate to get that filter gummed up and starve the engine for oil. So I'm glad I changed it. Uh, I was gonna change it at 50 hours again. I'll probably change it at about 30 just to be sure I got the majority of that RTV out of there, and then we'll go on the 50 hour oil change process from there on out. One of the things that I love about this machine. It's power, it's speed, it's, you put your foot on the floor and it is responsive. Now I've heard with some of the Evo upgrade packages and stuff, it gets even more responsive, which blows my mind because it's one of the most responsive vehicles I've really driven um, to date. It's a responsive machine uh, and it's fast, If it's super fast. Uh, speed is what I wanted when I was looking for my, my toy, my little, early life crisis uh speed is what i was looking for so this is what i had in mind um if i wanted to go slow i'd have bought a razor <laughs> no but really the the determining factor for me between can-am and polaris was the seating i just don't like to sit up uh i like sitting back i like to feel like it's a cockpit the body on the can-am is definitely wider than the polaris so it feels like you got a little more elbow room in there definitely more my style this machine and the looks uh the polaris the razor is kind of going after almost a truck look which is cool there are a lot of guys and girls out there that love trucks i like uh, uh freaking pre-runner dune buggy nasty night rider rocket ship looking machine so that's what i got another thing i can't really stand but has nothing to do with can-am and nothing to do with the machine wickham tractor buys which is where i bought the machine it may be hard to see this sticker wickham tractor must buy these stickers and say i want a sticker that is going to sit on a machine and then when the sun hits it mold itself into the plastic and the guy will never be able to take it off. Can we do that? Uh, it drives me nuts. I've been picking at them, heating them up, trying to get that sticker off. It just, there's to no avail. That thing's not coming off. That's a bit of a ridiculous complaint, I know. But, I don't know. I, I like the aesthetics of this machine so much. 
I want to decide what stickers are on it, you know what I mean? Let me show you some of the things I've done to this machine. We'll talk about some of the things I still have to do to get it ready to go to Moab. And then uh, I'll cut to some GoPro footage, show you some driving. I'll call this video a wrap. So, one of the things, one of the first things I done ordered was these side mirrors. I noticed that back in this machine up, that rear view mirror, it's, uh, it's not flat. So it's kind of an optical illusion you're back in this machine up and you can't really see where you're back in. And my garage is kind of at an angle to the house. Everybody points their vehicle perpendicular to the house. So I'm backing up into the side of a vehicle. I gotta, I gotta back up carefully. So got these side mirrors. Now they look a lot like Can-Am's side mirrors, but these are the, probably the cheapest. I don't know even the name. They're the cheapest little Amazon $45 mirrors you can get. Did the job, super simple to install. Perfect, I, I loved it. Um, from the dealer, the dealer put on this, this pre-runner front bumper and this winch, which is great. That's great. I, I like the front bumper. I'd like to get the matching rear. I like that everything's orange accented. They also put on these Lone Star Racing rock sliders. These rock sliders, they, they look great. I, I like the machine. Like I said, aesthetics is the main reason I picked this machine. Uh, this one came with a roof. I'm not sure if they all come with roofs. This one did. It's the plastic sport roof. Now back here. Right now, I just put this on yesterday. This is their, their bed box. It makes use of the bed that you otherwise wouldn't be able to use. Now, that's a problem. Once again, fit and finish with Can-Am. Uh, it's a really nice box. They've got a waterproof seal in here and the seal does well. I would hazard to say that this box is waterproof, 100%. But because they only use two mounting points on the back two corners and nothing in the front center like they should have, especially since there's a mounting point on the machine right in the front center what am i supposed to do am i supposed to punch a hole in my waterproof box de defeating the purpose i mean they, they really need to get their fit and finish together they've designed a really really crazy machine here they've 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 spent a lot of time and money investing into this machine maybe it's time to take some of those engineers and have them Make products that don't suck. <laughs> There's nothing you're really going to do with this bed. Um, aside from you might be able to strap something down in there. Maybe a spare tire. You can figure a way to strap it. But it's flat. It's not like, uh, like the mule has got a legitimate bed. This is not the same. Put that back on later. Uh, what else have I done? So the whip... That's a custom dealie. That's a LED strip with a smart LED controller. It's a fire stick four foot antenna. And I had the fire stick quick connect. Do not buy the fire stick quick connects if you're gonna use them for this purpose. I, I almost wouldn't trust them at all. Uh, going down the road, the quick connect just snapped. Pink, right in half. I wouldn't trust that quick connect from fire stick so what i did was i rigged up um a couple of air fittings a couple of air fi fittings i had to weld a nut to one i had to thread a bolt into one to make this work we got it mounted with some amazon roll roll cage mounts they they just bolt to the roll cage here and they give you a mounting point off of the back one whip on the center it's super bright looks great going down the road i couldn't be happier um i've also yet to put in but i have focus focus i've got a windshield it's a little half windshield so one of the things i noticed with my first machine my mule my kawasaki when i first got it it didn't have a windshield and it was pretty pretty quick i mean it's all relative at this point nothing compared to this but when I first got the machine, it got up to speed pretty quick. It got up to the rev limiter pretty quick. Um, then I put the windshield on it, and now all of a sudden, the Kawasaki was a big old sail 
flying down the highway. So I didn't want a full windshield for this Can-Am. I didn't want to annihilate my acceleration, but you need a windshield with these Can-Ams. They, <laughs> you're gonna eat some dust if you don't have them. So instead of the full, I went with a half. I'll get that installed and that's another box checked for my road to Moab. Uh, while we're at the mule, this is coming to Moab with this too. This is gonna be what my wife drives through the trails and it's gonna be basically the rescue vehicle. This thing's gonna be the tank. It'll have your tools, it'll have your tow rope, your jumper cables, it'll have your fuel, your water. Um, it'll have its own spare tire. I'm gonna probably mount a spare tire to the Can-Am, but it, spare tire, uh, spare belt, it's gonna have spare parts, it's gonna have, this machine is pretty much gonna be the tank, which is why we've renamed it the tank. Uh, you can see I've already got two Rotopacks here. This Rotopack is an actual Rotopack and it's uh, three gallon. This Rotopack over here is a fuel packs and it's a two and a half gallon. Same mounting point as the Rotopacks. Um, I think for this trip, we haven't put anything in this two and a half gallon. We'll probably use that for water this trip. Um, until we can get a white one. They didn't have any white ones for water. All right, so back to the Can-Am. The only other thing that I've done to it, aside from the Fox Tune, uh, general maintenance, um, steering wheel alignment, I've messed with that some, the whip, the box, the door bags, the mirrors, the windshield, all I've done is I've named it and I've lettered it up. So you've probably seen throughout the video already, we've dubbed it the Honey Badger. Honey Badger don't care. Got the Big Apple Ranch sticker there, you got to represent. This is one of my favorite stickers on the machine. It's the Honey Badger logo, nose behind the BRP emblem. Reaching out for that BRP, that's cool, I don't care what you say. Uh, BTY Motorsports, uh, it's something I used to call myself a long time ago. BTY Motorsports, and of course, the obligatory Dillagaff sticker. Gotta have a Dillagaff sticker and another little, little honey badger head. So that's it for the machine. I'm gonna finish installing some of this stuff. I'll cut to some GoPro footage of us driving it around and we'll do an ending. And I'll tell you the plans for the Road to Moab video series. There you have it. Good day of riding. Done. I got the windshield installed. Got the door bags installed. Got the rear box. Um, now, there's a few more things I'm going to need on the road to Moab for these machines. 
first thing being uh i'm definitely gonna need some form of turn signal and horn for each machine <clears throat> the mule still needs a whip i think i'll build another whip just like that one the uh the led illuminated whip let me turn that on real quick <clears throat> so i'm gonna need a whip for the mule i'm gonna need orange flags for each turn signals horn kits for each the mule needs mirrors got to get them they're both insured but i got to get them both register uh, registered in the state of utah that's coming i'm gonna need spare tires and rims for each i got a spare belt for this i'm gonna need a spare belt for the mule little tool kit i gotta deal with the logistics of hauling both machines so i've got to get the trailer situated figure out how i'm gonna haul both machines it's an 18 foot flatbed on a bumper pole i'll figure that out and i'll videotape it but for now that's the end of the video hope you appreciated the new addition to the big apple ranch and we'll catch you on the next one stick with me on the road to moab i'm out later <laughs>